Hello and welcome to Mukbanga Studios. In this video, I'm continuing my M32 edit series. And today, I'm gonna to be explaining the config page. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this is the config page. I've briefly talked about the mixer and the channel page. So today, I'm gonna to get dive deep into this. First, you'll see, let's go left to right, you'll see this section here. This is the same for all of the pages, uh, apart from the mixer one. Up here, you can change the picture in your scribble strip. Here, you get an input level and an output level. Pretty simple, and it's the same across all of them. Now, let's get into specifics of this page. First, we've got the stereo link. So, this links two channels together. So, like one and two, or three and four, you can't link um, two and three together. It has to be um, like one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because if you see I switch to this one, it shows you a right stereo link. So it'll link to the right, and this one links to the left. That should make sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Next, we've got our polarity switch. Now, when you hear polarity, you often hear people talk about phase. These are different things, but they interact in uh, very closely, and some parts are the same. So. I'll link to an article that explains it better, but essentially polarity is a switching of the positive and negative. So if a signal starts positive and as a wet, you know, the waveform goes up first and then goes down, hit the polarity switch, first it'll go down and then it'll go up. And this affects phase as well, but phase is about timing and works in degrees. So it'll start by going up and then coming down, like, you know, that's how waveforms work, but you can then move it in 180 degrees out of phase and it's similar to switching the polarity but it's moved in time it hasn't just inverted so the polarity can affect the phase of the signal and that's what we're hoping when we press it we want it to change the phase so it sounds better I'll link to the article and it'll explain that a lot better than I can you'd sort of use this switch when you have two mics on one source you'd want to make sure that they're in phase like uh, if you have a mic on the top of the snare and the bottom of the snare, you want to have a, you want to sort of flick the switch, see which sounds better, sounds like they're in phase. Next, we've got our source selection. So here, uh, this is channel one, so I've got input one selected, but you can use any input to go into one of these channels. You can route a bus to one of these, and it goes through all the settings, and then you can mix it in. You can route in any of the 30 channels, the auxiliaries, USB, the effects, it's all the effects. It's super handy. I've used that a bit, I think. Input 4 is input 18, just because that's how it's set up, so I've soft patched around. <coughs> really helpful. Next, we've got our trim and or gain setting. Now, they're not the same thing. In um, Midas and Behringer, if because I've got it selected on the AO1, the AS50 uh, digital snake selection, it's showing trim. If I had the snake connected or if I had it on local inputs, then it would show gain. The, I'll link to an article that explains the difference between them. In this case, um, trim is more of a volume adjustment. It sort of works as, yeah, like a smaller, you don't have, it only goes 18 to 18, whereas I think um, gain goes up to like 60. I'll also, uh, I'll link to an article that is possibly the same article, possibly a different article that explains um, sort of what gain is and how it's different to volume. But essentially, gain is at the, the volume at the beginning of the source and is before any of the processing. So the explanation there is if I push this like all the way up and have the fader quite low, then you're going to get a lot of distortion. Oh, well, probably you're going to. If you have it really high, you get some distortion, and it's going really loud into the gate and the dynamics and the compressor and, and the EQ and everything. It's going to get quite loud going in, whereas if I bring it down and boost the fader, it should be about the same volume, but it won't be as loud going through the processing, and it won't be... There's no... It's not going to get as distorted or anything. Um, so generally, the idea is keep it a bit lower here, you can always boost it there, but there's lots of recommendations about gaining things. 
I've heard keep it, get the input volume between negative 18 and negative 12, but sort of uh, you want to listen to it and whatever sounds best is what you want to go with. Um, next we've got uh, a low cut section, and I'll touch on this more when I get to the EQ page, but essentially a low cut, it's also called a high pass filter because it lets the highs pass, but um, might as well better call it a low cut, and that's often what I refer to it as. So what it's doing here is it's cutting, and I'll show you on the EQ page, it's cutting anything below a certain frequency, so it's come up to 64 hertz here, and then it has a slight curve down, and then everything before that's cut out. It's different from like a like a shelf like that. And I'll get into all that later when I look in EQ. But essentially, yeah, it's it's cutting frequencies, and they've put it. Here. I'm not sure why they've put it here. It's this is separate from the four band EQ. So you have your four band EQ plus a low cut, which is really helpful. Then they've put in a, an input delay. I've never used this, um, I'm not sure exactly why you'd use this, you could, could be for a phase thing, but that just delays the signal before it hits, um, and so it's later than the rest of the signals. Pretty cool. Um, then we've got um, you can decide where you want the insert positioned, whether you want it. Um, it's depicted better on this channel page. So you can decide whether you want the insert here after all of that processing or before the equalizer and compression. So it's doing the same thing here. You've got EQ and compression and it's sort of where you want it. You can see the arrow moving. You can also insert an effects on the channel. You get a 32 band EQ if you need it. Or you can have reverb right on it, but generally I send the effects using the buses. And I'll get into that in a later video. Um, so hopefully that's helped explain the whole uh, config page. Hopefully you've learnt lots from that. If you do have any questions, let me know. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and learnt lots about uh, the minus M32 config page in M32 Edit. If you do have any questions, let me know down below. Happy to answer any of those. Uh, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you see the future videos. And if you missed the last one, go back. I'll, I'll link the playlist down below. Go check that out. Uh, and I'll uh, go do some audio. See you next time.